Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the town hall matter. I'm on the town meeting. Um, to get started for a meeting, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Is there a motion? Call meeting to order. Sure, I'll make a motion to state to call the meeting to order. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. All right, we're going to start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we have a moment of silence uh, for those less fortunate, those in difficulties, and those overseas supporting our cause. Thank you. Um, I'd like to have another moment of silence to think about our blessings and all the things that we can appreciate in life so that we take a moment to just really say thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. We've had a really, really busy month. Um, I'm going to start out with the mayor's report. Um, I want to say that um, some things that <coughs> everybody should be aware of, and there's some information in the newsletter as well. Um, State Highway will be actually resurfacing um, Lanesburg Road and doing new sidewalks um, over the next year. Um, we anticipated them doing that this summer. They will probably start the sidewalks this summer, uh, but may not get to the resurfacing until next spring. Um, in the interim, there will be some WSSC work that's also going to happen on Bladensburg Road. And so I um, just want to make everybody aware of that. And then we will get, the, once we have their schedule, we'll put it posted up on our website. We did have a meeting with State Highway um, to talk through the details. Um, that meeting included Cottage City, um, as well as um, Mr. Baden and um, the chief and um, some other um, people to ensure that our services can be maintained. Um, we also had a business meeting this month, a business association meeting, which we started again quarterly. And our quarterly business meeting, we bought in State Highway so that they could talk to the businesses also about what was going on. We also had Delegate Fennell to talk to the businesses to inform the businesses of things that have come about um, through the delegation at the State House over the summer. I mean, over the, uh, the, the winter session. And we also had, um, who else was speaking? Um, oh, Reverend Gail Addison also came in to talk to the businesses about the Port Towns Job for Youth program. Um, if you have any students out there looking for jobs, the Job for Youth program is going to start soon. This is a program that's been around for almost 20 years and have employed many, many young people over the years. So. Um, Please, uh, you can check out End Time Harvest Ministries on the internet to get more information or just call the town hall. Um, I also had the wonderful opportunity just last weekend to visit Roger Heights Elementary School. I visited with about four fourth grade classes and three third grade classes, which was uh, quite a wonderful experience to go through and uh, tell young people about government and how you can get into it and and how things work and 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 hear all the really wonderful exciting questions that they ask that <laughs> you would not imagine uh, uh, would be uh, questions but they, they're wonderful and great so that was a wonderful opportunity we also had Earth Day um, which you know I participated I did most of my stuff off of um, Newark Road uh, really saw some interesting things there and actually observed some of our businesses that really need to put a little bit more effort into keeping their um, places up and I've been able to communicate that with some of them uh, but we, uh, we we did a great job I think that we did about 30 something uh, bags and uh, um, Councilmember Epps will tell you a little bit more because we had two groups here cleaning up and it was a wonderful experience we also had appreciation dinner a couple of weeks ago where we were able to appreciate several of our residents in town and their names are all in the newsletter. Uh, but it is so important as we discussed that 
when the residents help and support what we're doing, call us, let us know what's going on, keep us up to date, have, be the eyes and the ears, it makes our life that much easier. Also, when we have a lot of community activities going on that are sponsored by people in the community, that keeps people active and busy. And when we have youth programs, that keeps children from getting into mischief. So we really had to appreciate all these people who help in keeping the town clean, who contact the chief and let him know what's going on, who attend meetings for us and assist us um, with activities and, and also keep the youth busy. And um, that was a wonderful experience. Uh, one of the things we did at that event was we actually named this hall. This is now the Diana M. Fennell Hall. And we named that for Diana Fennell, who was our mayor for 12 years, who is now the delegate in the State House, and who put so much of her energy and effort into getting funding to make this building happen. So that was a very rewarding um, thing. We also named the, the, the um, conference room the Rudgell, um, Rudshaw, Adele, Adele Rudshaw. Um, conference room and Adele was one of the longest living residents in the town of Comer Manor. She passed away about six, seven years ago, um, but she participated in everything. She was always active no matter how old she got. I believe she was in her mid-90s when she passed, mm -hmm. but she was a model resident for this community and so we were happy to do that as well. Um, I was also able to attend the Black Mayor's um, Gala, which is a fundraiser for scholarships for youth in our community. And they gave out, I think, about 10 scholarships to youth in the community. Um, I also was able to attend a PGCMA um, dinner where Executive um, Baker actually um, hosted PGCMA in Upper Marlboro and actually gave us an overview of what his recommendations are um, around taxes in the school system. And um, I will state my own personal opinion, which I did even at the meeting, was that I felt like the school system certainly need improvement and it's really important for us to find a way to do that. Um, but I do think that the hike that he's recommending is just enormously too high uh, to impact and the impact that it would have on our communities um, would be, um, I think, um, unseen what would happen. It's just too much, um, too fast and um, could drive a lot of people away and therefore we're not helping the people that we're supposed to be helping by getting better schools. So um, that I think is, uh, that's my report. I thank you all so much. Okay, council, your reports. Ward one. Good evening. I'd like to say happy birthday to the uh, May birthdays and I got a couple of grandchildren in May and uh, get well to the sick and shut in. Also, if there's any sick and shut in or anyone that needs a grass cutting or help around the house, maybe they can contact their council person and they can see if we can have someone to come out and help them. I did notice a lot of people in Ward 1 are working on the yards. The flowers look nice and they've been put their mulch around and this and that. Looks very nice. I went to the community garden Saturday. They had a plant exchange. It was really nice. And um, there's a second garden coming. The first community garden's full at this point, but there's a second garden coming. And so if anyone's interested in uh, getting a second guard, uh, getting a garden, uh, you can contact Carrie for that. Uh, notice there's a lot of kids throughout the town running and playing, riding bikes, skating, and skateboards and everything. So I just want everyone to be careful and slow down if you see the children at play. Um, on Fridays, the Comer Manor Bible School have a program for the children there. It's at 3 o'clock to 6 or 6.30, and it's just like a little after-school program. They teach you a little bit about the Bible, and then they play games and this and that. Also on Monday, the Comer Manor um, Bible Church, uh, Pastor Bird's Church, has a program for the kids there also at 6.30 on Monday evening to 8 o'clock, and they play games and have a little bit of Bible structure also. Uh, I want to say the mayor and council are doing a great job, and it's a pleasure working with them, and I've received a lot of compliments of different projects and things that they're working on. And I just want to inform them. Thank you. Citizens are talking. Thank you. Thank you. Four oh. two. Oh, good evening. I'd like to say a happy birthday to my son, Anthony Mills. 
Okay, this Saturday we had basketball kids, and we only had four kids to participate between the ages two to four. Maybe it was due to the uh, Mother's Day weekend, so maybe we'll get more kids to participate this weekend. Okay, and this Friday we have an, our happy hour plus. It's every third Friday of the month from seven to midnight, and the mission is eight dollars. Okay, and then July the 9th, we're, we're gonna have uh, the Mama van here at the town hall, uh -huh. and it's uh, free for ages four, 40 and over. And if you would like to participate, just call 202-741-3252. Thank you. Thank you. More three? Good evening. Um, I really enjoyed talking to the residents in Ward 3 when I passed out the welcome packages. I know some of the residents wasn't home, but I did try to reach, um, drop the package off, and I did try to touch base with as many residents as possible. I, I have a few more left, and that's because some, of, some people have do not, no trespassing, so I didn't want to go in their yard, <laughs> or they may have a dog that I, you know, wasn't sure of. But I really enjoy speaking to every individual. I heard your concern. Thank you for informing us about the bait pickup, because that's something that we need to know as mayor and council, so the residents, thank you for informing us about Bates was only allowing you to pick up three uh, bought pickups when that's not in our contract. Um, I, we also, I also noticed while I was walking around, some people are putting trash cans in front of their driveway. Not their driveway, a driving space. I know parking is limited in some areas, but you cannot hold a parking space for your wife, your cousin, because that is public um, property. But I really, really enjoy that. I also wanted to let you know, Merlin has a number called 211. This number is for anyone that's have a crisis. You can call it, and it, there's also a website, which is www.211merlin.org. We have a, Merlin has a large amount of kids, not just Prince George's, Merlin in general, as far as suicide rate. This is a help hotline that you can call 24 hours, not only just for sewer, for mental illness, for if you need food, if you need assistance, if you need legal assistance, this research is available for you. Just wanted to let you know, uh, PGCMA next meeting is May the 21st. At that meeting, they will be electing their board members. I'm hoping that the mayor or one of the other council members can attend because that particular day I cannot attend. But I am up for re-election so wish me luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, well, one thing, one more thing, I'm sorry. May the 15th is bike to work day. So put your sneakers on and get the bike in. One, one more other thing. Everyone knows that the, off, the firefighter passed away in the District of Columbia. He will be laid to rest on Friday in Fort Lincoln. I had the opportunity to run into their test run into Fort Lincoln Cemetery because we buried my uncle on Monday. And I know traffic is going to be backed up, so just pack your patience. We will have a lot of activity on Blainsbury Road on that day. Thank you. Well, I register for the bike day on Friday at Miss so I'll be there on, on Friday. Mm. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I sent out an electronic email for the newsletter to all, everybody on my email list, and I want to know if they would like to have it uh, electronic or still come through the mail. If you, whichever you choose, just let the town hall know, especially if you want to opt out of the mail, the mailing. Just let the town hall know so they can take you off the mailing list. Um, there, there will be no post town meeting. Uh, they have not set a date yet up for us to meet for the uh, CDC post town day. CDC Port Town, yeah. Um, the cleanup on um, Earth Day was nice. It was, we had a nice turnout. We, like the mayor mentioned earlier, we had like 36 bags, went along, um, picked up most of the trash and stuff, and gave uh, AWS the location of other uh, places that we couldn't pick up. And um, it, it was it was just a lovely experience to people. I it, for people just to come out and to meet them to see how concerned they are of, of the river in your area. It was, it was just a lovely experience. Uh, we had a, a wine and cheese out here on um, May the second, uh, and it was a one-on-one -on -one with our candidate, elect Congress congressman. 
Glenn Ivory? Congressman. Yeah, Glenn Ivory came in and sat and talked with us one on one. Um, we had questions he answered for us to the best of his knowledge. It was, was a very lovely experience. Uh, there is a garage sale on June 6th, uh, 7 to 3. Uh, the residence is $15, the non residence is $25. $25. Come, you tell her, talk to Kayla, call Town Hall, talk to Kayla, and set up um, if you want to reserve a space for, but you have to call between 9 and 4, I think, 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Uh, there's a grand opening Town Family Health and Wellness Center on Friday, May the 15th from 10 to 12. Uh, the, the old police station, we now have someone occupying that, that, area, that space. I'd like to co uh, congratulate all the graduates of this year, the 2015 College's Well High School. And I'd like to wish my oldest daughter a happy birthday. Yay. And and um and wish the, my councilwoman Jackson daughter a happy, happy birthday, birthday too. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, I do want to reiterate the opening, the grand opening of the Family Health and Wellness Center on 43rd Avenue. Uh, we're all very excited and it's open for you to come in and see what's going on, what they're going to be offering, how they can help us in the community. Um, I also want to announce that social services is going to be moving back into the facility with the Family Health and Wellness Center. So they'll again have um, some local services right here in the community um, uh, locally again. Um, I also want to say that I, I am really still working on the second garden, uh, which would be in Ward 4. I uh, just reached out to, uh, they just gave me information last week and I reached out to the guy we're supposed to talk to there. Um, I don't know if we mentioned this last month or not, but I do want to um, say that we are missing Mr. Long. Um, he, he passed away um, almost was it April? April 19th, yes. And um, he had been sick for a while, um, so we, we, we hope that he's in a better place. Um, he's our rec director. Um, and so we, we all are really going to miss him here in the town hall. And I'm sure the youth that have worked with him over the years will miss him as well. Um, and uh, so Renee um, Watts is continuing to work in the rec area, and she'll be there and available for anybody who needs to, who wants to participate. But we, we do miss Mr. Long. Um, another thing I want to say before I go on, I do want to make sure I know that sometimes people are uncomfortable coming to the town hall to say or things they want to say or. or want to be on camera and as the council member mentioned you can always reach out to your council um, members we do want to know what you know and we want to know so that we can put actions in place to move things forward um, I will give you my card um, I have um, I give my card um, to anyone but I'll give you my phone number for anybody who doesn't it's 301 I'm sorry it's 240-498-5466 so if you ever want to call me talk about anything, something that's going on, something you're saying, please feel free to do so. Um, I'm here for that. Okay, so the next thing I want to report on is what happened in our work session. We were, um, I did not have the information from the May work session, I'm, I'm sorry, for the April work session <coughs> when we had our town hall meeting, so mm, I'll give you a quick update on that. Um, we had a conversation with Power Pack, which is one of the youth performing art programs that we are working on, and uh, we had a presentation from the <coughs> um, uh, from the director of that program, and um, talked about it further later. Mm. Excuse me. The chief gave us an update on National Night Out. <coughs> National Night Out is going to be at the Bladensburg Waterfront Park um, this. August and we're going to be doing it all together with the rest of the four port towns so they're all working together on that um, we are we talked about uh, scheduling some quarterly Saturday meetings with residents because we know that there are some residents that can't make it on evenings uh, we didn't come to a conclusion on when and while how to do that but um, we will um, talk about that further um, we talked about um, town ordinances and um, how that information um, is getting out or some classes on town, town ordinances so that people can start to see 
what they need to know to learn. And as you might have gotten in the newsletter, you'll see that Mr. Queen is actually <coughs> putting together one on um, animal activities and how we should uh, be observing our animals. And I think that's in, what month is that's June 17th. June 17th. So that's moving forward. Um, we also talked about speed bumps. There are speed bumps that are due, particularly on Monroe Street and Ward 4. And um, we've put the administration to move forward and get that done. Um, Ms. Epps also talked about some recycling trash cans, which um, we are trying to, these are about the trash cans on Blainsburg Road, right? Th that was in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Was that here or for the town, for the hall? Oh. About those new, um, we're trying to find grants to get these recycled trash cans. Oh, okay. Is that, I think, was okay. in the right. meeting. Those are the ones on Bladensburg. Yeah. On Bladensburg. Oh, yeah, the oh, oh, okay, there's two, she had two items. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. So the recycled trash cans was about us having recycled trash cans inside the town hall. Right, yes. right. so now, now we have recycled <laughs> trash cans in all the rooms in the town hall as opposed to just one can for the whole hall. Um, and then we also talked about trash cans on Bladensburg Road, which um, um, Council Member Epps has brought forth some trash cans that are solar powered and they also do condensing, condensing and um, take on everything. They're, they're, they're fairly expensive, but very, very eco-friendly. So we're looking for some grants right now that can aid us in potentially getting those cans. Uh, well, we talked about cleanup day, which of course we had. We also talked about CPR classes and uh, most of the staff were all scheduled. Mo many of them are having their CPR classes tomorrow. And um, then we have another series in the fall with most, most of the, the, the council and the mayor be um, attending those. Um, we did an update on the Riverview, which is the big project that we've been working on for about eight years now um, at the river. Uh, we talked about a pesticide ordinance and um, asked Mr. Barr to take a look at the ordinance in other towns, such as Tacoma Park, to see what they have so that we can uh, mirror those things and get some ordinance. We scheduled the budget um, work sessions. We talked about the welcome packages, which has now been mostly distributed and getting those actually out the door. And then the plan, well, we had a very busy April 11th, so <laughs> we had to do a whole plan of action on that, which required a line item on the budget. But it was a wonderful day. It turned out really well on April 11th, but there was a lot of things going on here. Um, as for the work session on May 5th, um, we also, um, we, we got the update on the policy for the pesticides, which we're actually going to introduce today, and then we'll move forward um, with the action on that. Um, we confirmed the final contract for the Performing Arts Group. Um, we talked about the Summer in the Park program and perhaps establishing a multi-year agreement with Maryland National Capital Park and Planning in relationship to that, as well as um, asking Maryland National Capital Park and Planning to fund the facility to some extent as well um, for that program, which they use almost the whole building during the summertime. Um, Mr. Baden brought forward the audit contract, um, which we all agreed to. We, had the, we talked about um, a change in our bus drivers. Uh, we will have three bus drivers now who will alternate the time, still the same amount of hours, but we're alternating three drivers instead of one. Um, we talked of an employee's leave status and how we, um, what we needed to do to work around that. Um, we talked about the Beehive Project and the process that we have to go through in the registration and everything um, for beehives um, to be in town. And, and so the Garden Club will be going through the process um, required by law and um, along with um, informing residents in relationship to this project. It's not going to just happen. People are going to work on that. Um, we also talked about having cleaning crews available for our hall rentals so that they can pay for someone to clean if they choose not to. And so we are looking if there's anybody in town that has a registered cleaning company and would like to be um, listed in the package we will make you um, known to our renters so that they can contact you directly if they wish to have you clean for them. 
Um, we also talked about moving the vending machine because we, we have a lot of activity up here with the youth when no one else is here because they're coming to the vending machines. Um, we also talked about establishing a rule for a second trash can and we did that um, where if you have more than seven people that live in your house and you can show that there are more than seven people who live in your house then we will provide a second trash can um, for your household. Um, we have heard from a lot of people with large families that are struggling um, to work with the one trash pickup a day and we want to do whatever we can in order to ease that pressure. Um, I also offered a recommendation about a parking permit pilot for Ward 4. This is something that we would further discuss. The pilot is based on a short period of time to see whether it works or not, but in order to find ways for people with multiple cars who have multiple people in their houses to have the opportunity to park where people with multiple cars with only one person in the house take on some alternatives for their parking. So we are going to discuss that again at the next work session. Um, we, we did further discuss uh, the Riverview project again and we then talked about the budget a little bit more before ending the meeting. Did I miss anything, Council? No. All right. So that brings us up to date, brings you guys up to date on what happened in the work session as well as this session. And our next item on the agenda then would be our treasurer's report. Mr. Baden. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there are copies of the April report on the table over there if anyone wants a copy. I uh, would like to note that the public safety uh, department got left out of that report when the copies were made, but I'll give a brief overview of that. And if anyone wants a copy, they can come by the town hall later this week and pick one up. But um, this is for the first 10 months of the current fiscal year through April 2015. We had total revenues for the month of April of $28,395. This brings our year-to-date revenue to $1,281,971. Uh, revenue sources are broken out amongst the uh, large majority of our funding sources. Um, under expenditures for the month of April, general government expenditures were $56,706 bring the year-to-date expenditures for general government to 579000 against a $703,000 budget. Um, maintenance for the 3611 43rd Avenue building, which is winding up because we no longer are in that building. Uh, so these should be close to the final cost. We're $408 for the month. Total year-to-date, we're $6,569. And for the town hall building, uh, total expenditures for the month were $7,378 and $64,629 year to date uh, for the town hall. Under public works, expenditures for the month were $19,472, year to date of $198,954, and a budget of $257,980. Expenditures were 5,662 for the month, 46,518 year to date, and $65,575 budgeted. Uh, public safety, again, which you don't have in your uh, copy of the treasurer's report, were $24,646 for the month of April. Largest portion of that comes from salaries and payroll taxes of about $23,000. Uh, Year-to-date expenditures were 362000 and the uh, total budget is 489574 for the police. The cash balance at April 30th and all the accounts were $748,397, and total expenditures for the year to date are $1,259,115. That's a uh, quick overview of the April report. All right. Any questions by the council? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? I'll make the motion to stay Second. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Ward one? Aye. Ward two? Aye. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. Mayor votes aye. Thank you, Mr. Bayton. You're welcome. All right, Chief. Uh, you have a police report? 
All right, for the month of April, it was pretty quiet. We have new major incidents, but I do like to, uh, to reference to apparently on May the 8th, uh, the Garden Club reported to uh, the police department that somebody apparently had stole some of the flowers from the planters at the shopping center. Unfortunately, they didn't want to make an official police report, but I just want to put that out there. So if anybody knows anything of, of, of war, seen anything or like that, let, please let us know. Also, um, for the month, we had a total, we had five written reports for the month. We had 76 calls of, ser 76 calls of service. Uh, we had one, one arrest for DUI, and we had three uh, impounds, uh, impound vehicles for the month. I'd also like to note, uh, to piggyback on Ms. Epps, I was informed today of the funeral detail for the DC firefighter today. On Friday, that will start approximately, the procession will be coming down Blazeburg Road out of DC. It's probably gonna be about a three hour procession before they get all make it to the cemetery. So this will start around 2.30 once the traffic will be coming into Fort Lincoln Cemetery from the DC side. But the Prince George's County Police will be blocking off 38th Avenue at the shopping center. So there will be no traffic allowed to go up past 38th Avenue into DC or any traffic allowed to come down except for the funeral procession. And that, and approximately what I was told is going to probably last about three hours, the, uh, the blockage on Blazeburg Road because of the amount of people coming out for the funeral. So I will be putting out an email probably tomorrow out on my, just a traffic alert through my crime alert email tree, which is about 140 people now on it to let people know about that as well. Cotta city has been advised as well. Their chief over there as well. So just want to be aware of that. Unfortunately, Friday's the worst with rush hour traffic. So I definitely know this is going to cause some congestion, but uh, they will be detouring traffic through onto Rhode Island Avenue and they'll be having state highway. will be putting up uh, the traffic signs along Blazeburg road and like the peace cross, letting people know about the closure. And on the Rhode Island Avenue, it would be the traffic boards put up. So the kind of Friday, this Friday the Friday. 15th, yes. So I do want to submit Miss Epps kind of wrong when she said that. It kind of brought it to my attention. Jackson. Yep. Sorry, Miss Jackson. I'm sorry. That's a yeah, so I just wanted to, to chime on that as well. I was going to put it out anyhow. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's all I have for the month of uh, for the month of April, Mayor. Should yeah. took over for charge of the fallen yeah, officer that was very, yeah the, the very fallen, nice. heroes, uh, yeah, the fallen yeah. heroes memorial yeah. service for the prince george or for the police chiefs association yes. of prince george's county this is our third annual a lot of people aware uh if you're not aware prince george's county police chiefs associate of course i'm serving as president this year of the association uh this is our third year we actually had a a blue what they call blue math which they do in dc for memorial week for police memorial week the prince george's county we do our own here in the county and we had this on May the 6th here at the church here next door, the New Covenant Church for all law enforcement officers to attend and families of them fallen officers that have died in line of duty within Prince George's County. So, and it was, uh, of course, Council Member Epps attended that event. Uh, Delicate Diane Fennell came as well and spoke. Uh, Chief McGall, um, we had quite a bit, you know, and plus our, all, a lot of the chiefs from the different municipal municipal police departments came. Plus our federal agencies came and our state agents that work within Prince George's County. So it was, it was a really nice event and I appreciate it. And I think it's something good to honor the officers that have died, so. Yeah, and I, I wanna say, I, I think you guys did a wonderful job here. It's really appreciate it. You, you being able to have it here in the church. And um, Sergeant Sims did a wonderful job. I observed her working really, really well. Oh yeah, and I don't wanna say thanks to her, yes. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, Sergeant Sims was my one that did it. I gave her the project to do and she did great. I had a, we had a, quite a few compliments and a lot of people liked our facility here and mm -hmm. hopefully I got some inquiries so hopefully that might help us as well about bringing our facility out so that was good so that was a good thing too so having that you know having all the various ages to come here to see our because not a lot, a lot of the other chiefs have not seen this facility yet so it was great to see that yeah, always yeah, nice to have awesome. police cars parked in front of the building yep. <laughs> oh yeah that too <laughs> there were a lot that's of them. right well thank you so much chief anybody have any questions for the chief um, I do also want to mention, along with the planters being, you know, ripped apart a couple weeks earlier, our garage sale sign yes. was ripped to pieces. Was somebody just tore it down and ripped it apart or whatever? If anybody has any idea about what this vandalism is, um, please let us know. You know, we like to nip it in the bud um, because it's just disgraceful and uh, completely unnecessary. Um, and the banner costs us money too, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're trying to do good stuff, so we're going to stay positive as long as we can. Thank you so much, Chief. You're welcome. Okay, so unfinished business. Um, one of the items we have is the budget. And when we gave out the schedule, um, 
last month for how we were going to organize the budget. We had actually intended on having a budget hearing this evening, and um, but because of dates um, and certain matters of technical, we won't have, be able to have the budget hearing until um, June 9th. Mm -hmm. However, we have the budget. The budget is available. It's online. Um, it, it's here at the table, and um, we'll have Mr. Baden to actually give us a summary of what that budget is. Even though the hearing is next month, you're, we're open for comment all the way up until that point. So anyone can always offer um, suggestion or comment, and then we can actually make some response to it, whatever that might be. Um, even all the way up until that point in time. So okay. just want to let you know that. So Mr. Baton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to give a little background, the uh, first budget meeting that the Mayor and Council had was on April 27th. Uh, you know, that's when I present the budget to the Council. We go through the budget in detail, line item by line item, uh, discuss it. Um, you know, the public was invited to that meeting. Uh, we made some changes to the budget, and on May the 5th, those changes were uh, reviewed with the mayor and council. Um, you know, there were some other minor changes made to the budget at that meeting. Uh, there will, this item is on the agenda for tonight, which I'll give you know, a pretty good overview of the budget itself. Uh, the budget is available for anyone who's at home and would like a copy. It's available here at the town hall. Just come in the front office. It's also on the city's website at uh, www.colmoremanor.org. Uh, so you could, you know, go on there and review it as well. Uh, so plenty of opportunities to, uh, you know, take a look at it. As the mayor said, you know, we welcome public input and would like the public input uh, on the budget itself. Uh, we'll just have it on the agenda again for the June 2nd work session. And then on June the 9th, we will be adopting the budget. And we'll have our constant yield tax rate hearing on June the 9th and also our official budget hearing we required by the charter on that night as well. And then later in the meeting, we will uh, hopefully take action to adopt the tax uh, rate and the budget itself. So with that said, uh, I'd like to give a quick overview of the highlights to the budget. Uh, the budget is a $2,355,988 budget, which includes $1,683,900 in expenditures and $672,088 in reserves. We include prior year surplus into our budget so that if during the fiscal year we have a need to go in and appropriate some of those reserves, they are in there. So, you know, the expenditures, you know, in the size of the budget is really about 1.68 million. Uh, you know, but when you look at it on paper, it shows us 2.35 million because we have the reserves included in there as well. Um, within the budget itself, the uh, residential real property tax rate includes a rate of $1.31 per $100 of assessed value, and the commercial real property tax rate is at $1.03 per $100 of assessed value. Uh, the residential rate is actually six cents less than last year, and the commercial rate is seven cents less than last year. Um, fiscal year 16, our fiscal year begins July 1st, ends June 30th of the following year. So this is the year uh, July 1st of 2015 through June 30th, uh, 2016. It's also the first year of the reassessment cycle for the properties in town. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the, uh, your property uh, is assessed every three years, reassessed every three years, so you probably got a, a notice uh, you know, a couple months ago, and then your taxes are due uh, half and by September 30th and the other half by December 31st. Um, so the tax rate, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that the town is uh, assessing in order to uh, provide for the uh, cost of operating the town is $1.31 for residential and $1.03 for commercial property. Um, <clears throat> one of the other, um, well, I should state that the, with, with that 
tax rate proposed will generate an additional $26,425 in real property tax revenue to the town. So uh, by setting the rate at uh, $1.31 to $1.3, the town will realize $26,425 more in real property tax revenue this year than last year. Uh, real property taxes are the uh, largest source of income to the town and are <clears throat> budgeted at $428,687. And if you're following along uh, on the report, that's the first item you see at the top of the first page of the report. In the right column, the far right column is the proposed budget. Uh, the other columns are fiscal year 15, current year figures, which include year to date, uh, actuals and projected where we project to end up at the end of this year uh, for each of the revenue and expenditure accounts. Um, other revenue items uh, I wish to note are highway users revenue. Uh, they're projected to increase $4,185 in fiscal year 16. Uh, this is due to additional funding allocated in the state budget for this revenue source. We're still down significantly from about six years ago. Uh, we used to receive about 30% uh, uh, you know, of the funding for that source. Right now we're getting about 19%. Uh, Governor Hogan has uh, talked about reinstating that to uh, you know, the 30% the level uh, during his administration, but, you know, there really was, you know, it was just a small increase this year. We'll see what subsequent years uh, hold out for. Um, one of the other larger source of revenue, which uh, is related to the red light camera revenue, is projected at $275,900 for the year. Uh, there's also an offsetting expenditure account in the police budget for the cost of operating the camera in the amount of 115,900. Uh, there's been no reduction proposed in the red light camera revenue based on lost income due to the road improvement project on Bladensburg Road that the mayor talked about earlier. Uh, we've been meeting with State Highway. We've expressed our concerns that if they're milling the road and they tear up the centers in the road, that that could have our cameras down for a period of time, which would affect you know, the revenues to the town because the cameras would not be operating. So we're going to be working carefully with them, uh, with State Highway, in order to limit or eliminate the downtime, any downtime associated with the camera. And we haven't projected any lost revenue associated with that. So, you know, we need to manage that uh, properly during the year when that work starts. Um, rental income for the facility here is projected to increase by about $8,000. Uh, we're just seeing a larger amount of rentals, as Chief said, at, uh, you know, the event that he had last week. You know, there was, you know, people asking about the rental of the facility, and you know, we're trying to utilize it as best we can, you know, to serve the community and uh, also, you know, generate some revenue from that. Um, <clears throat> the fund balance from fiscal year 15, the year that we're in, to fiscal year 16 is projected to decrease $68,012. That means we're not bringing enough revenue in in the current year to cover all of our expenditures. And we've used savings from prior years of 68000 to balance the fiscal year 15 budget. Um, in fiscal year 16, you know, the budget as proposed uh, has us using an additional $20,189 of fund balance in order to balance the budget. You know, it's not a significant amount, and we actually have, as I stated earlier, a $672,000 savings or fund balance from prior years, which is about 40% of our operating budget. So we're in a very healthy position as far as surplus goes uh, for a town our size. You know, you're usually looking at about a 25 percent um, fund balance as a as a safety net, which is you know will take you through about three months of uh, expenditures or three months of operations before you use that. Uh, so 40 percent is a little on the higher side, but we're actually drawing that down little by little and using that also for one-time expenditures versus operating expenditures. 
Um, you know, it's another good practice. You know, you don't want to fund your ongoing operating costs out of reserves because eventually reserves will, you know, get will dry up, and then you got to find another source or increase taxes to do that. So, you're pre being pretty diligent. Um, you know, with the use of our surplus funds. Uh, included in the budget is a community foundation grant, um, or actually, a uh, community foundation grant was received in fiscal year 14. Uh, $3,100 of the grant was spent in fiscal year 14 and this year, and the balance of 6900 is included in the 16 budget, and we also got another 15000 uh, just this past week for the grant and you know we were, we've budgeted the full amount in fiscal year 16 we'll probably have to have an adjustment during the year because between now and June we'll, we'll we'll be spending some of that we don't know what the portion is so we've included the full amount as a revenue in 16 uh, or carry over into fiscal year 16 as well um, the next item, you know, larger item, which is a recurring cost, but just want to point it out, uh, debt service for the uh, loan on this building is $217,000. Um, that is, you know, budgeted each year. Uh, salary costs amongst departments includes a 3% increase uh, for the employees. Um, Good thing, there are no costs allocated for the maintenance and operation of police facility building. Uh, as you know, we've moved out of that building, there's a new tenant. Uh, you know, we've, the police department was housed there for quite a while and, uh, you know, now we don't have any costs associated with that. So that was a, a savings for this year's budget. <clears throat> um, the chief has asked for uh, funding for a new uh, SUV uh, vehicle uh, for the police department. Its estimated cost is about $37,000. Uh, this isn't currently in the budget, uh, but we're gonna look and see how we end up this fiscal year, see if our uh, reserves come in at or above uh, what we're projecting and reconsider the purchase of that vehicle early in fiscal year 16. So probably July, August time frame. you know, once we finalize the financials for fiscal year 15, uh, we'll take another look at that and see if we could afford to uh, purchase the additional vehicle for the police department. There is current um, funding in the police department budget to uh, do some upgrades, some painting and restriping of a couple of the vehicles that he has. Um, yeah, but we're looking to add, you know, additional one to the floor. Um, there's also, well, that's, the, yeah, that's what I just noted. And pretty much those are the highlights. All the other items that you see within the budget are either at or slightly above, uh, you know, the current year's uh, budgeted amounts. And, um, you know, with that, I... Turn it back over to you. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Baden. Um, we definitely had a very, um, what, how long did we spend in our, about three hours? About three hours the first night and, you know, a and couple more hours the second, second meeting. Second night, and, yeah. So, so. Well, you did the work. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours, so, okay. Yes, just to let you know, we don't take it lightly. We actually do go delve in deep on this thing. Um, I do want to mention this to you, though, because this, to me, um, equals that. Uh, these are the your um your reserve numbers from um your estimate for this year uh, i mean from the beginning of this year to what it's going to end at yeah the ending for this year is going to be using some as but this, I'm, figure. I'm talking this number not this one i mean i know this one is for this year but this is for the ending this just equals that one is that equals this is ten thousand dollars off all right, we'll take a look Let's at that. Take a look and see which side it's on, because it could be in that number or it could be in this number, but something from that right there. Okay. All right. <laughs> Anybody have any um, questions or anything uh, you want to add um, to the to Mr. Uh, Bait? Okay, good. Thank you so much, Mr. Bait. I think we're ready to go with that one. Um, and so, again, we'll have our budget hearing um, on uh, June 9th. Mm -hmm. And it'll also be on the June 2nd agenda for any other discussion. Right, if there's any comments. additional comments or people want to end. And like I said before, you can always reach out to us if there's something you see and you want to ask about it um, or hear further. Um, so let us know. 
Um, all right, moving on to new business. Um, introduction of the ordinance 03 2015 2015 um, we mr. B Abar gave us a draft last mm -hmm. week um, for us to review I mean at this point we're not voting to vote it into act so there's still plenty of time but we have to introduce it mm -hmm. and then we, we would introduce it this month and uh, and then we'd have a public hearing next month which will probably be the same June 9th a public mm -hmm. hearing on this and then we'll take a vote after that mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, we've had it already for a minute and but like I said we still have an opportunity to make changes to it if you want to, then we'll to so is there a motion it. right once we after introduced. it's introduced mm -hmm. yeah so is there a motion to introduce the pesticide ordinance sure I'll make that motion to introduce ordinance 03-2015 is there a second, I'll second. any discussion um, just want to say that this is um, we're introducing this to you tonight however on the pesticide law it does not take if we do adopt it it does not take effect until 2017 and with that being said if we do agree to adopt this the green team will have seminars and information of the resources um, out to the community to update them, to keep update them aware of what's going on with it, right? Or just other ways how to take control of the mosquitoes besides mm -hmm. killing the bees. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, um, and and I'll add because that that's the key thing here. It's it's not to just jam something down people's throats. This is a smart thing to do, but we realize it takes people time to have to learn and understand what are different ways to handle Same things. Case. So that will be, mm -hmm. the green team will be working very closely on making sure that happens. So um, our, any other discussion? Aye. Call for a vote. Ward one? Aye. Ward two? Aye. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. And the mayor votes aye. This bill is introduced. Um, all right, next new um, business. Um, as you guys know, usually there's a couple of our young people who graduate from the Port Towns Youth Council um, students, and this year there is Mariah Jackson. Uh, mm -hmm. Jackson? And, oh, bo both of their names are Jackson and Ty Jackson. That they're not brothers and sisters. No. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yes, Mariah's, okay. Mariah's one of our residents in town, um, and in full disclosure, uh, uh, Council Member Jackson's daughter and Ty Jackson is one of the young men that's worked for the town um, through the Port Towns Youth Council and the Job for Youth program in the past and um, we usually make some contribution towards um, these youth in um, uh, moving forward with their next step in life so um, I wonder if um, there's a motion available to provide um, perhaps a hundred dollar stipend um, towards their education or any number that you might want to offer what as a motion I'm not sure I, I'm sorry I, what's I, the question I'm not, I'm not oh, abstaining. So I think, you know, abstaining. I'm abstaining but I think in the past we did give $50 to right. yeah. yeah I think I, rem you. I remember $50 right. mm -hmm. well okay. I motioned that we um, give to two students $50 for graduation. Okay, can we separate this motion so that um, Councilmember Jackson can vote? Would yes. you mind separating, <laughs> doing one child at a time? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes. You want to make it? A motion? motion that we give Mariah Jackson fifty dollars for graduation. Okay. Is there a second? I second that motion. Is stated. Any discussion? Mm -mm. Okay. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Stay. Ward four. Aye. Mayor votes aye. Okay, is there a motion for Mr. Ty Jackson? It's Tay. Tay, Tay Jackson. I'll make a motion to give Tay Jackson $50 for the Port Town Youth Cancel Student Graduation. Okay, is there a second? No, I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? Mm -hmm. Ward one? Aye. Ward two? Aye. Ward three? Aye. Ward four? Aye. And the mayor votes aye. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, team. Okay, so moving on to committee reports. Um, I know Mr. Mutchler said that he wasn't going to be able to attend um, today. He told us ahead of time. Um, so I don't know. Does anybody have a senior report? Um, yes. No, okay. no senior report. We just miss Mr. Mutchler. Yeah, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> and Connie. And Connie. And Connie, yes. yes. Uh -huh. And um, so Garden Club, is anyone here? I know that our president is Karen. out of 
town. Um, so yes, anybody want to give the Garden Club? Yes, we have I'll Leslie, see. our Garden okay. Club secretary. Our Garden Club Leslie. secretary yes. is Leslie. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So, hi, I'm Leslie Mitchell of 4325 Monroe Street and secretary of the Colmar Manor Garden Club. So, I'm happy to report that our community garden plots are filled and gardening is in full swing. We use the funds from the Community Health Partnership to provide the wood and soil to build taller boxes and we now have 25 large boxes for residents to grow food as well as two boxes with flowers dedicated to the memory of town leaders who have passed. This spring, we added two peach trees, raspberry and blackberry plants. The support of Christian Melodies is helping with our infrastructure and plants as he shares his skills from the Eco City Farms. Last Saturday, as mentioned, we had a plant swap to share homegrown organic and heirloom plants. We know many garden sell, uh, centers sell plants and even plants for food. They're pre-treated with Nico, um, Nicanatoids, which can damage the pollinator uh, population. Um, we all need the bees to pollinate one in every three bites of the food we eat. Um, we're thrilled to have the introduction of the new ordinance that's going to take our town into a bee friendly direction and we'll be happy to work with the residents to use products that protect our pollinator friends. Our garden and garden club are getting a beehive of their own and soon and letters will be sent to residents and neighbors about our pollinators and how they'll be an asset to the neighborhood. Thanks and great gardening. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Very much appreciate that. All right, now green team report. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Howe, 3410 40th Avenue. The green team is happy to report that we that the Know Your Port Towns event was a success with more than 25 people participating. We're talking yes. about a second event in the fall. We thank all who helped, and we'd like to give a shout out to Councilmember Blue, who we found out can make trees grow business cards. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're also working on a sustainable Maryland process. Our next meeting has been moved to next Tuesday. That's May 19th at 6.30 here in the town hall. All are welcome to join our green team as we work toward an eco district and a more sustainable Colmar Manor. Thank you. All thank right, you. thank you thank so you. much, thank you. Uh, thank you all for all the work you're doing. This has been so exciting, um, hasn't it? Um, and our Sustainable Maryland's application is due June 30th, and I think that we're right up in know. there, ready to go, yeah. And um, I also want to mention, you know, um, we also will send in our application to be a banner city. Mm -hmm. um, Maryland Municipal League um, actually uh, has awards towns that actually take very specific steps towards operating, informing people of government, working, even my fourth grade visit in, uh, had something to do with actually a part of making sure that we move forward and they call that a banner town or a banner city. And so our application went in just yes, uh, Friday and yes. so we're good to go for banner city again. See that? That's sure. right, that's right. And we're tree city again already. Right. So yes. we're, you know, we're getting all right that stuff, money. all that stuff put back together again. So thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we're open for citizen comments. Anybody have any comments? Feel free. No? Mm -hmm. Council members? I um, just want to say, um, Carrie Briggs will be attending the Prince George's County 2015 Green Summit for us, which will be held on Tuesday, May, May the 19th. And she'll give us a review of what she learned and what they talked about at our green team meeting. Okay. Um, awesome. Also, thank you, Leslie, and also Paul for stepping up and coming up and being a part of the town. We are looking, we're really looking hard for volunteers for our recreation department. We have a lot of kids in the area. I know parents, I know you're busy because I'm a parent too. But if you can allow just one hour just to come up and plan ideas for our recreation department. Yes, Councilman. Yes. I just wanted to uh, let the citizens also know in the Newton Street Park, we are going to receive some oh, new yeah. exercise equipment. Dan, you want to speak a little bit about that, please? 
Um, yeah, we actually uh, submitted a grant for exercise equipment and an upgraded uh, tot lot area mm -hmm. um, it's right across from the community garden down there in that location. There's a little uh, concrete pad that goes back right in that area. It's just to the left of that. Uh, we submitted a grant for both the playground equipment and the fitness equipment. We were awarded a grant and can't remember the exact figure, but it was about $94,000 uh, under the Community Parks and Playground Program through the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, we should be getting the official notice and paperwork uh, probably around the end of June, beginning of July, and then we've got to go through the process. So hopefully you know, around this time next year, we will be uh, installing uh, that equipment, but it's, uh, you know, should be pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's really very exciting. And I do want to remind everybody that we do now have exercise equipment here, a weight training equipment right here in the facility. So please come up and um, uh, take advantage of that. It is such a costly thing. And most people in low or moderate income communities just can't afford to go to gyms or whatever. And walking the trails is wonderful too. Um, but um, Let's, let's take advantage of what we're trying to do in town. If you have a neighbor or friend um, that um, you know, let them know that we do have things available here in the community and we really would like people to use them. Um, so anybody got any really exciting things to say about the exciting stuff going on in your life right now? Oh, sure. I have a wedding coming up uh -huh. in uh, yes. a week. My daughter, Jamie, will be getting married. Yeah. <laughs> also, I wanted to remind the citizens, also, Mayor, that uh, Maryland National Capital Park and Planning has the summer playground program here at the building also, mm -hmm. and you can register for that for next month, June. Mm -hmm. I know we got some graduations. Yes, I have a daughter yes. graduate from 12th grade from Blainsburg High School. Very proud of her. All right. Great. <laughs> Anybody else? Some exciting things going on. Yeah, my son needs to graduate June 1st. Illinois County. Ooh, yeah. Awesome. Really exciting. Exciting yeah. stuff. I mean, I have to just, you know, uh, appreciate, I think appreciation is a critical thing that we have to do every day, all the time. Um, know what we really have. And um, I have some issues with my skin, and sometimes it can be very, very painful, and I am so appreciative that I am feeling better right now. That's great. And um, I, I thank the doctors that help, mm -hmm. you know, every day. Um, and the because people your encouraged health, you to go. And the people encouraged me to go, right. um, to go ahead and do something, because I feel so much better, right. and it is nothing like your health. Yes. There's nothing like your health. So take care. I want to thank everybody for coming out. And is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Sure, I make a motion to adjourn and check on your neighbors. Thank okay, you. all in favor say aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.